Uh, hello guys, welcome back to Domestic Tech Guide. Yes, I told you that this is a channel where we show you how to connect simple electrical and technical works at home. It's been a while, but we are back. And today, we are go I'm going to take you through how to connect and install a Yagi antenna. And to begin with, I'm going to show you how to assemble the antenna. For the assembling part, we shall have, this is called the main dipole. Uh, then these two small ones are side dipoles. Then we also have our dipole brackets. Then we also have a clamp and these screws. So this clamp, it is then which will help us to connect the antenna onto the pole. Uh, so we are going, I'm going to show you how to fix the dipoles on the main dipole. To begin with, we are going to get these two brackets and we fix them on our main dipole. You make sure that you direct them onto the hole. So after that, we are going to screw our two brackets onto the main dipole, but we do not over tighten the screw since we are going to put our side dipole here on top. So after that, we are going to get this side dipole. We press it this side. Then we screw. So since we had not tightened the, the screw here, we are going to fix in this other side dipole on top here. With it, then we screw again. You make sure that these screws are tight. So now we are, good, we are good to go. This is our Yagi antenna. We are done assembling it. So we are remaining with this. It's called a clamp. Uh, this one will help us to attach and fix this Yagi antenna onto the pole. So now let's go to the side of the pole. So this is our Yagi antenna that we assembled from the other side. And these other things I already explained to you. So after assembling the Yagi antenna, we are left with this part here. This is a connector. This is where we, we fix the RF cable. So when we are mounting this antenna onto the pole, we are going to make sure that this connector faces downwards. Why? Because in case rain enters in this connector, we, we sh it might rust and when it rusts, the signal might be lost. Uh, so we are going to mount our antenna onto the pole. So to begin with, this, I had already told you that this is a clamp. We are going to fix it in, in our antenna and we make sure that the connector is facing down. Then we mount it on our pole. Uh, we can mount it at an angle of 90 degrees so that it is straight. Then we tie these the bolts. So here I'm tightening the bolts to make sure that our antenna is tight on our pole. And I think now I'm done. This is our antenna mounted onto the pole. So now we are going to go to the part. I had already shown you this connector that faces down. This is where we are going to fix this RF cable. So we are going to mount it on this connector here down like this. Then we, we fix it, we tighten it there. After connecting the RF cable into this connector, we are going to just tighten our RF cable using the cable ties just in case that if someone pulls it from down, it cannot 
fall. So we are going to use these are called cable ties. So we can fix one here. And then we can fix we can fix another one here at the end. Then this last cable tie, we are going to put it onto the pole. Ah, so this is how best you can mount out the antenna onto the pole. Then maybe uh, we can cut, we can use a cutter and we cut these cable ties like we make them short. Those are the simple steps on how we can now mount the Yagi antenna onto the pole. It will be like this. Uh, so now we are done installing our Yagi antenna onto the pole. So the next thing we are going to connect this other end of the RF cable onto the receiver to check the signal quality and strength. Uh, with me here, I'm having a digital TV. It has an inbuilt receiver. And this is the other end of the RF cable that we connected from the antenna. So we are going to connect it onto our digital TV, which has an inbuilt receiver on the RF input port. Uh, so we are going to connect this other end of the RF cable onto this port. Uh, they have written their antenna cable, so this is where we are going to connect it. Uh, then after that, we are going to go onto the side of the power. Uh, so I'm going to plug in the power cable onto this port here. Then I plug in the cable into the socket. Then I power. Uh, so now here I'm going to use my remote to switch on my TV. This is the power button on my remote. You press it. Uh, so after turning on my TV, I'm going to look for the inputs because the TV usually have different inputs. So I'm going to press this button here on my remote. It's for inputs. And then I go to all inputs. I press OK. Then I'll go to live TV since this TV already has an inbuilt receiver. I'll press on live TV. So when I press, you can see that it is not, not programmed. It means that we haven't scanned the channels. So we are going to go to the part of scanning the channels. So I'm going to come on my remote and I'm going to press this other button. Uh, it's for home. Some other remotes have menu. So you press it. Uh, you go to settings. Then you go to all settings. I go to all settings. I press OK. Uh, so I'm now going to go for programs, then I go to program tuning, I press OK. Uh, so you can either do auto tuning or manual tuning, but for the, man, for the auto tuning, uh, it brings all channels, including the scrambled channels. Scrambled channels are those channels where you need to pay. But now for our case, we are going to use manual tuning because we do not want those channels that where we are going to pay so the scrambled channels will be not will not be there so you press ok uh i said that we are using addictor tv so we use that very first one antenna dtv you press ok uh, so now you can see that it has brought the frequency the bandwidth the signal strength and the signal quality i'm going to go on this part here i choose my input uh, according to my location I will press channel 21, I press OK. 
Uh, so now from my TV, you can see that it has, it is bringing the frequency, the bandwidth, and it's bringing the signal strength and the signal quality. So you can see that my signal quality is 100% and the signal strength is also not bad, it's 86. So in moments, in cases where you find that the signal quality is not 100, like you will go back to your antenna and you try changing the position of the antenna until you get, while checking the, you will be, changing the position of the antenna while checking your signal quality on your TV until you get a good uh, percentage. So I'm going to go to add channels, then I close. I press OK. So we can see we have 24 programs added. So those are the channels that we have. And we can see that. Our antenna has really been connected very well, and that's why we are getting the signal here at the receiver end. Uh, so now, according to my location, another channel that I can use, it is channel 36. So I come here on channel 36, I press OK. So you can see that it is scanning. My signal quality is 100%, and the signal strength is 62. So this is not bad. So I go to add channels then I press OK so here it is scanning the channels so we see that also on channel 36 we have 26 program we have 26 channels and we can see that uh, we've got the signal at the receiver end so in cases where you find that you are not getting the signal in your receiver you can come back to your antenna and you try changing it, you change position until you get a best position when you can get a clear image onto your, on your receiver. Or else, sometimes you can increase on the height of the pole or you can change the position of the antenna until you get a clear image. Uh, so that's how easy the process was if you've been following. Those are the easy steps that you can follow while you're at work, at your office or any other workplace and you would like to connect an antenna onto your receiver, those are the few steps that you can follow. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Kindly like, like our video, share. If you have anything that you want us to help you in, you can put your comment in our comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.